Curtis.
And he just thought he was the cat's meow. He's walking around telling her, but yeah, I'm from New York. New York, we're better than you guys. We're funny than you guys. I'm a tough guy. I'm Louie. And I said, hey, tough guy. He goes, yeah, what? I said, come here, man. He goes, what? I said, you're a tough guy? He goes, yeah, I'm a tough guy. I said, give me your hand. He goes, why? I said, just put your hand on my hip. Puts his hand on my hip. I look at my leg and went, and he ran out of the room crying. <laughs> But I was going to get the operation, and then I had this horrible nightmare. I was actually sleeping, and I woke up in the middle of the night. The dream was that I was on the operating table, and I heard the doctor say, Nurse, I think I've cut you deep. And the nurse says, Why do you think that, doctor? He says, Because I'm scratching the table. <laughs> now, that was just a dream, but it scared me enough that I put off the operation for two years and started taking this medication, or some people like to call it candy. It's called Vicodin. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Everybody's going, oh yeah, I heard that, oh, yeah. Vicodin is very strong, but it works. And I was taking 10 to 20 pills a day. Yeah, it worked. I didn't have any pain, but I couldn't feel anything from the neck down. I didn't know if I was going to the bathroom or not. It, yeah, because one time I was leaving the club and I was talking to a guy, I go, well, I'll see you next week, I gotta go. He said, looks like you did. <laughs> so I went in and had the operation, but while they were in there, they hit a nerve and it put me back in time. See, life is like a cycle. You go back to the way you started. Remember when you were little, when you were a baby, you start out wearing diapers. Then you get older and you're wearing diapers. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> Not making jokes about it, I'm serious. It's very relaxing. It's it's kind of it's kind of comfortable because I know that at any point if I have to wait. <laughs> so I can just go, and that's a good thing about it. So I had the operation, and I'm much better. I can dance now. I can do this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. The ladies like the moves, the guys are telling me to go to hell. That's great. Yeah, but a little bit more about myself. Uh, as I said, my name is Perry. Originally from Philadelphia. I have a mother back in Philadelphia. She just turned 85 on Tuesday. And my mother is starting to develop a little bit of dementia. I don't refer to dementia, but she has it. I called her up, I said, hey mom, happy birthday. She goes, who's this? <laughs> mom, it's your son. My son, yeah, this is Perry. Perry? My son's name is Perry. <laughs> yeah, mom, this is your son, this is Perry. Oh, do you know Perry? <laughs> mom, this is your son, this is Perry, I'm your son. Yeah, I know that, but where's Perry at? <laughs> mom, this is your son, I'm on the phone. Who's this? Mom, this is Perry. I have a brother named Victor. You know Victor too? And this goes on forever and ever. Do we have anybody here with, with uh, dementia? I just want to know if I can repeat myself in another 20 minutes. Yeah. I know I'm developing, I'm getting it too. I mean, it happens to me all the time. I, I live up in Panorama City by Van Nuys and there's a place where you get off the freeway and it splits. And there's times where I just pull up and I go, I don't remember if I'm making a left or a right. I just, I get confused easily. But that's all part of life. You know, we're not young anymore. We're all getting older. I don't know if you notice this. And honestly, I am tired of being called a senior. I think we should be called vintage. Because vintage means you've been around for a while. You've been knocked down. You've been fixed up. You're still working and you have a lot of value. Right? And we have value. We are the ones that got the country started. The kids these days, you know what a kid's life is like? This is a kid on the street. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. They all got their nose in their phones. That's all they know these days. Remember when you would talk to somebody on the phone and you would say, thank you? And they would say, you're welcome? Now you say, thank you, what do they say? Nothing or uh huh? So I have fun with them. When I say thank you and they go, uh-huh, I say thank you. They go, uh-huh, and I go, thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. What? Thank you. 
Oh, you're welcome. I'm training them, so that's what you gotta do. Yeah, and it's not easy getting older. Our bodies change. We get these phantom pains. Have you ever had that? You just sit in there, and all of a sudden your arm goes, ow, ow, ow. And then it goes away, and it never comes back. Our bodies change when you were young, and you were thin and slim to take a shower and wash the soap off. All you had to do was put your arms up and turn around. Then you hit 40 and gravity starts to pull parts down. And when the wash the soap off and when it gets out of your body, you have to lift things out of the way. I did this last week, I found a wallet. I had $50 in there. I didn't know where it was for a month. It was right under my stomach. We get false teeth, we have dentures, I have dentures. How many of you have done this? First six months that you get them, you leave your house, 30 minutes later you're driving along, you remember you forgot to put your teeth in. And you talk to everybody like this all day. Or, how you doing? What like that? And our hair goes gray. My mother is 85, her, still, her hair is still bright red. I don't know how she does it. It's magic, it's never turned gray. And her eyebrows have never changed shape in 85 years. They look like caterpillars with no legs. Just giant stripes across her head. Somebody want to get that? Get that. Could be your wife. Where are you? Get home. I'm watching some comic. He's making fun of you right now. Yeah, I'm wearing the blue hat. Why? I'm in the middle of the room. Not some woman's talking to me, you know, there's a show going on. If you want to step outside, it's okay. All right. You want to sit here and talk. No, no, she walked away. I don't know who the hell she is. Why'd she bother me? No, I'm not disturbing the show. Just keep talking. What's going on? So did you place that bet? All right, go ahead. So, sorry I get distracted here because it's very easily. Yeah, but it's not easy getting older. You know, we start to lose our hair. I'm very happy that I have all my hair. I've actually had young people say to me, do you color your hair? I go, yeah, I darkened it and then I sprayed the gray back in there so I would look cool. You know, but I'm very happy to be alive. I wake up every morning the same way. Oh, hey, I get it, all right. But I know my time's coming, because the other night I was sleeping and I heard, boom! I opened my eyes and the Grim Reaper's standing there and he goes, damn it, now I gotta come back. <laughs> uh, but I get to get the jacket off, it is very warm, so I'm gonna take the jacket off and I want you ladies to be calm, all right? Because we're jumping up and running up to the Here we go. One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I love that sound you women make, yeah. That's great. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, I've been married to the same woman for 25 years in a row. Yeah, I say in a row because it's Los Angeles and who's married flats out here. We met online back in 1990. And back in those days, they didn't have computer dating now like they have now where you can see somebody. In those days, it was just letters, that's all. It wasn't even color. And communications were so slow that you had to watch the letters build themselves on the screen. It didn't just boop, boop. No, you would type your name and it would go boop, 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 That was just a P alone. By the time my name finished printing on the screen, my wife made a sandwich, ate it, and digested it. So we talked for three days, she came out, we fell in love, and we started going out. Now in those days, I didn't have a car. In those days, I had a motorcycle, big blue bike, and I had a trunk on the back of it because I didn't have a car, I used it to go everywhere. So I had a big box on the back, what they called the trunk, where I could store clothes and helmets and stuff like that. And on the trunk, I put big white letters that said, Perry Cycle. Are you getting the joke? Perry Cycle. People didn't always get it. Every time I'd be driving the traffic, a guy would pull up, hey, what's a Perry Cycle? It's mine. Your name's Perry? Yes, it is. What are you, a comedian? Yes, I am, and he would try to run me over. So we went out a lot, and in those days I was working at the comedy store. My, my wife got to meet a lot of famous people that I was working with. Uh, Richard Pryor, she got to meet Richard Pryor. 
She met one of my best friends, Uncle Milty Milkborough. You remember him? Yeah. I met him in 84, and he was a dear friend. I have a couple of his books. I got autographs. Just the sweetest man. She met Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, how you doing? Rodney was a great guy. And we went out on the bike a lot. And then after about six months, she says, hey, why don't you come out to my house? So I drove out to her house. I walk in there. There's a guy on the couch. And there's a little baby girl crawling around on the floor and a boy and a girl in the corner. And I said, uh, I hate to say this, but who are these kids? And she goes, ah, 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 I guess I forgot to tell you, I have children. And I'm sitting there looking at the doors trying to figure out which is the fastest way out of the house. <laughs> we know the saying, you don't get involved with somebody who has baggage. My wife owns Samsonite. <laughs> But the kids were cute, they were smart, they didn't look anything like me, and I thought they would be the same kids to raise. So we all moved in together. After a year and a half, I realized that the kids did not know their father, they didn't have a father. I thought I would be a good guy to be their father, because I don't drink, I haven't had alcohol since 1974, I stopped drinking, when I lived in Philadelphia, and as I said, I'm diabetic, I have a sweet tooth. Well, back in those days, I was in Atlantic City, drinking in a bar, drinking double shots of Southern Comfort, chased by a Coke No Ice. Yeah, here almost everybody went, oh. Southern Comfort is very sweet and very strong. This is the stuff that killed Janis Joplin, and she was almost a man. Well, I was drinking double shots of this stuff, chased with a Coke No Ice. I drank two shots, all of a sudden a big cowboy trucker walks in and goes, Hey, a little man like you drinking all that? Think you can drink more, little man? <laughs> I said, if you're buying, he said, sure am. So he bought me six more double shots of Southern Comfort. That's three quarters of a bottle. Now, I'm a little guy. I'm a little under six feet tall. I'll tell you when it's a joke. And I got plastered. He got up and left. And I turned into liquid mercury and slowly slid off the stool until my face hit the floor. <laughs> I'm laying on, on the floor saying to myself the same thing every drunk man says. Well, I'm drunk as hell. It should be easy to pick up a woman now. Why is it guys think they're extra sexy? Because they can mumble and drool at the same time. You walk by and they go, hey, hi, 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 I'm sorry. So I walked out of the bar and did two things drunks do. I fell, I hit one knee, hit the other knee, bounced up, turned around as Keanu Reeves and watched myself do it. Whoa. Then I stumbled and stabilized myself against the invisible wall. And it works. I don't know how the drunks do it, but that's it. Went into the bar across the street, I'm talking to women, and they couldn't understand me. And I knew that because I couldn't understand me. You ever hear a drunk? <laughs> Last thing I remember, I was in the corner talking to a little black girl, but she wasn't giving me the finger, she wasn't telling me to get lost, but she was staring straight out of me. And I got depressed. I walked out of the bar. I crossed the street and I walked to the end of the dock looking down at the cold Atlantic Ocean. And I watched the waves coming up and I started to cry. I don't want to live anymore. Nobody loves me. Ah! I'm going to kill myself. Ah! I can't take it. Ah, ah, ah. And I stepped off the dock. What I didn't notice that six feet down sticking out was another dock. Oh <laughs> I landed on a twist of my ankle, smashed my head on a plate, and woke up in jail the next day. My friend bailed me out, it was a thousand dollars. That'd be like ten thousand dollars now. It turned out I climbed two ten foot chain link fences to get to the dock. And he said that it was a government dock, it was Coast Guard. I broke the law, police property. We're driving away, I got this knot on my head. And he says, you were a mess last night. I said, yeah, the last thing I remember, I was in the corner talking to a little black girl. He goes, black girl, you're on your knees talking to a bar stool. Uh, 
So that was the year I stopped drinking and became a comedian, 1974. I've been doing comedy for 41 years. I have never had a day job. This is all I've ever done. Supported my wife and the three kids. In fact, after we were together for about, I don't know, about a year and a half, like I said, I realized the kids didn't have a father. So one day, I gave everybody a little gold ring and I got down beside the dinner table. I said, I'd like to ask for you to marry me. And they all went like this and my son said, whatever, can we just have dessert now? <laughs> so we got married at City Hall, not a fancy wedding. Walk in, I go up to the camera and said, hi, we'd like to get married. The guy goes, oh yeah, you let go get married. I said, no, we'd like to get married. He goes, yeah, you get married. I said, no, we want to get married. He goes, yeah, Maui. <sighs> yeah, can we just get Maui while we're here? You have a seat, we call you when we're ready. I said, we wait for you when you're ready, you call us. Thank you, Bobby Potts. So we're sitting there, and the kids are running around. All of a sudden, we hear from Sarah and Larry, please come in. I walk in, it's the same guy wearing a judge's robe. Only now he's speaking perfect English. The accent had gone out the window, completely gone. And he finally gets in the end and he says, and now Perry, or rather, now Sarah, do you take Perry to be your lovely wedded husband? She goes, I do. And he goes, and Perry, do you take Sarah? And these people to be your family. And they said, yeah, I guess so, I'm here, right? See, guys, the ladies are laughing because it was a stupid thing for me to say. And the problem is, women remember everything that we ever do wrong. Forget about an elephant's memory. Women remember it after they're dead. They will come back and remind you. So we left there, and we went to go on the road. I had a gig that weekend. The gig is what they call it when you're working. So we went on our honeymoon, and we spent our honeymoon in Barstow. <laughs> Does it get better than that? <laughs> Barstow. It's a small town. It's a loop. A little loop. You pull in, there's two signs on a post. It says, welcome to, thank you for coming. <laughs> and there's actually inbreeding there. Yep, we met people who are their own parents. <laughs> we had more teeth than everybody in that town put together. Then we moved and we went on the road. My son said to me, Dad, you know, you love the road and you're getting older. Why don't we go do the road before you die? Uh, That's a motivator. So we moved to South Carolina and we worked the road. And then about 11 years ago, my wife gave me the shock of my life. She takes me to the bedroom and she says, I need to talk to you. So of course I said, what did I do this time? Because that's what men normally say. When you want to talk to us, it's not usually good news. She goes, well, I'm pregnant. <laughs> this is what I was doing. And I looked at her and said, any idea who the father is? <laughs> she didn't find that funny. She goes, that's one, don't push your luck. I said, I think I pushed my luck, didn't I? I didn't think I could get her pregnant. I didn't think I had anything inside my body except dust. <laughs> so I sat down on the bed. And I adjusted, and I watched my wife get bigger and bigger, and she gained a lot of weight. She gained 100 pounds. Oh my yeah. She was so round, if you pushed her sideways, she would roll back to a standing position. Her stomach was so big, she had smaller stomachs orbiting around it. And then, I guess with like five weeks before the baby was due, she started having horrible pain, and that vein in her head was popping out. So I took her to the hospital and the doctor said, Mr. Kurtz, we've got 20 minutes to get this baby out of your wife or she's going to die. And I looked at her and said, can you give me 30 minutes to think about that? <laughs> he looked at me and said, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> so they took her in, cut her open, they took the baby out and they handed me the baby. And I looked at her and those of you who have children, if you think back to that moment you saw your first child and you held that baby in your hand, and you saw that baby give you this look. Because they don't even know you're there when they first come out. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's better than a sunset, a sunrise, a million flowers. It's better than cash. It's the best thing ever. And I started to cry. And they said, do you want to cut the cord? I said, you're going to give me scissors? <laughs> so they put her down on the table. And they gave me these little scissors. Now I thought it was going to cut. I thought it was soft like this. No, it's like steel. I go to cut it. 
and every time I squeeze it, it's popping out of the scissors. So I'm chasing it around her stomach. They're all laughing, taking pictures, calling their friends. Finally, they came over to the, we do that to everybody. We took her home, we named her Bella, and now she's 10 years old, and she is just the most adorable little child. And I know she's attractive, because whenever I take her out, women say the same thing. Your daughter is so pretty. Your wife must be stunning. <laughs> do I get some credit for showing up? But people look at me and they go, how could you have a beautiful kid? So I brought a picture of her. Aww. I don't know if you can see that. Aww. That's my baby. <laughs> and she is so cool, she does stand-up comedy with me. Her first joke was, why did the chicken cross the road? He was tired of being cooped up. <laughs> wrote that at six. Seven years old. Why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? He had no guts. <laughs> And at eight years old, she wrote, why did the rooster cross the road? The chicken was on vacation. <laughs> yep, she is just the sweetest thing. And she doesn't take rough from anybody. She really doesn't. You know, she's very funny. We were out, we went to do karaoke one night, and a lady came up to her after she sang, and talking to her, and then all of a sudden there were a bunch of women around her, and I'm a father, I'm very protective of my daughter. So I ran over and I put my arm around her head because she's only this tall and I'm standing like this. And one lady goes, so is this your grandpa? <laughs> she takes the arm off her head, walks right up to the lady, puts her stomach up against the lady's knees and goes, lady, that's a bad way to start a conversation. This is my dad. He made me. <laughs> and she just passed up. You know, just kind of like, Bleh. just like that. We were in a Denny's. She wanted to get a plate for her hash browns. You know how kids want their food separate? They always want an extra bowl. So I said, well, I'll, I'll get the waiter. She said, Dad, you told me I need to be more assertive. I said, you're 10. She said, I'll get the waiter. She stands up in the bench in Denny's and stands there and she starts calling the waiters all the way to the other room. Hello, excuse me, waiter, waiter, over here. The guy's right in her face, and his face is bright white. He is angry, and then turns red just as she starts to talk. She goes, hi, could you please get me an extra plate? He goes, so you'd like an extra plate? And she goes, I'm sorry, didn't I just nicely ask you for an extra plate? And he loses it. He's walking away like, yeah. She said, give me a bump. That's what they do. And she just kicks her feet down full time. So I am just so happy to have her. Do we have anybody here with children? Yeehaw. Yeehaw. All right. Anybody here who still have your parents around? Yeehaw. Good for you. Uh, well, I think it's time we started kicking it up another notch here because we've got some more things planned for the day. So what I thought we would do, maybe we would do a little bit of singing here to get things moving. Now, it's really important that you remember that you've made it this far. Be proud of your age. Think of all the people that did make it. Those are the losers. You're the winners because you're still here. Do you have anybody with a birthday in the month of June? Anybody so back there? Late with the person with the hand up? You, yes, dear. When is your birthday? Monday. Monday. And what is your name? Eileen. Eileen. And how old will you be, Eileen? 78. 78. Congratulations. That's great. And do you see how fast she answered? How old are you? 78. Boom. Answer right now. Congratulations. And over here, and when's your birthday? <laughs> Yesterday. And how old did you turn? 80. 80. And what's your name? Diane. Diane. I love it. Both you girls, your brains are still sharp. <laughs> Just great to see when I play in the senior homes. I talk to people like, what? I did Mother's Day, I did a show down in Laguna Beach, and there was nobody on the property except for nine women. That was my whole show, a room this size with nine women. But only three of them are awake. <laughs> the rest of them are just sleeping. So there's one lady in the in red, and I, they told me it was her birthday. I said, excuse me, dear, is, isn't this your birthday today? She goes, my birthday? How the hell would I know? Why do you think they stuck me in this place? <laughs> you never know what you're going to get.
You in the back. Happy birthday, sir. How old are you? 54. 54? 74. Congratulations, and you're standing the whole time. That's amazing. I'm ready to take a nap. That's great. A nap is a good idea. I know. Everybody here is saying I could use a little nap right now. Do they have a sleeping room for when this is over? You got a question? This lady's birthday is coming up too. Oh, okay. And when's your birthday, dear? Uh, next week. How old will you be? 85. 85. Congratulations. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> See, sometimes people are afraid to tell me their age. Don't be ashamed, and never be ashamed of your age. Be proud of your age because you made it. Think of all the people that didn't get here. They're the losers. You got here because you wanted to keep going. You got from A to B because you know you're not ready to go yet. So never give up, never give up, never give up the ship. That's what I said. Uh,
These are called keytars because they're a combination of a guitar and a keyboard. I got this one 25 years ago. It was in a Ralph's Market above the freezer section. You ever go down the freezer section? If you look up, there's all kinds of crap up there you never knew existed. This was $50. The best thing about this, you turn on, you hit a button, and you're playing rhythm and blues. Everything's there. You can kick it in and improvise. Over here, 
and what's going down? Oh, she picked up the microphone and now she's walking away. I'm up here doing rap. I do it every day. A lot of people look at me. They say it's not right. They say I should be doing rap because I'm old, I'm Jewish, and I'm white. A Louie Louie. Thank you so much, I really enjoyed that.